And here we are. Now, we're doing a debate tonight, so I'm going to talk for a minute, and I'm pretty much going to turn the show over to Duke and let Mr. Lowry lead the whole thing. So with that said, Duke, you're up. All right. Well, the pressure is on. So tonight, folks, um, see, I have to say that we're amateur journalists. That's what we do on Bozier Watch all the time. We say we're amateur journalists. So, uh, Rex, you got to tell me where do I have to look. I have to look at the camera or do I need to look at the candidates? I don't know. <laughs> Either way. Okay. Well, <clears throat> I'm going to look at the candidates and I'm going to act like I'm looking at the camera. But we're out in uh, H-Town, otherwise known as Halton. Uh, some people may take offense to that. But since I grew up here and I'm literally... Uh, less than a hundred yards from half of my family, uh, I take pride in saying this is H-Town. And uh, I'm, I'm proud to be out here uh, being able to do a debate with uh, some gentlemen that I think are great individuals. Only one of them are going to be the next mayor. And I highly appreciate the fact that these guys are willing to uh, step up to the plate and serve. Um, serving in public office is no small thing. and. Uh, being willing to debate is no small thing either. Um, it informs the public. Uh, it's it's how we progress. We are able to identify our differences and uh, help the public to make an informed decision. And uh, I appreciate that and respect you guys being willing to do that. Um, so before we get into that, we have agreed upon terms with all of the candidates. Uh, we, we emailed that out to all of them, and uh, we're not going to spend a lot of time going into that. Um, as you longtime Bozier watch folks know, we have done uh, Senate debates, uh, City Council debates. We've, we've done a lot of debates in the past, and uh, they were informative. And uh, before we get more into the details, I wanted to take a moment to recognize and identify the location of where we're holding this debate um, because a local business owner in the town of Halton stepped up to the plate and offered to host the debate in her conference room and you know with that said I'd love for her to uh, introduce herself. Hey everybody I'm Stacy Berry and we are your local veteran real estate team here in Halton. We are in the building with the American flag mural Patriot Plaza, and I just want to say thank you for asking me to be a part of this and give you the opportunity to, to host it in my space. I'm very proud to have you here, and I'm excited for one of you to be our next mayor of Houghton. It means a lot to me because my business is here, so thank you for being here, and best of luck to all of you. Thanks, Great. Thank, thank you, Stacey. Thank you. All right, so without further ado, uh, just a little bit of a, a announcement to everybody about the, the rules and how this is going to go. Um, we requested from all the candidates to uh, create five questions that they would ask. And uh, the way we do debates, um, we believe that the people who know best the, the questions, you know, to inform the public are the candidates themselves. By taking the questions from them, that takes, you know, any bias and moderation that you may or may not agree and have saw on the national debates like you saw just the other night. You're not gonna have that with this this uh, style of debate. So with that said, we, we have the questions from each of the candidates and prior to the start of this, we drew straws or we picked numbers in this case to determine the order in which the questions were asked. And ironically, it came out to be one, two, and three. So that makes it easy for me and helpful, but that doesn't mean I can't screw it up. So we'll do our best to get through that. So uh, do you guys, you're gonna have three minutes to respond to the question. And if one of you wants to or chooses to request an additional minute to respond to the answer of one of the opponents, you can keep in mind, if you do, I'm giving the other two opponents a, a minute as well. So do you have any questions? No. no okay. Good. So let me get this clock situated, which I should have already had that done. 
And we'll go to the first question, which is Mr. Tidwell's, in which, see there, I'm burnishing my amateur journalist credentials because the folks don't know you're Mr. Tidwell, they don't know you're Mr. Hunter Timms, and they don't know you're Mr. Harrison. You see how egregious that is? <laughs> so before we do that, y'all give us a brief introduction of each one of you, and let's start in the order. One, two, three. Larkin Tidwell. I was raised in Halton, lived in the town of Halton for 10 years now. <clears throat> Raising my family. Good deal. Hunter Timms, uh, married to my wife, Casey. Have two sons, Colson and Cameron Timms. Live right down the street from here, Cornerstone. Um, little background on me. Uh, chunk of my career was in law enforcement in the Bossier City. Uh, also served in the Army National Guard for six years. Uh, deployed to Iraq during that time frame. Later in life, got into commercial banking and pursued real estate. And so, real estate, I own a, I own a franchise, a brokerage now that I'm, a, that I'm in. And I love Hodden. I'm so glad to be here. And uh, looking forward to this debate tonight, most importantly. I think it's great. Appreciate what you guys have done. Appreciate Miss Stacy for having us here. And it's 2024 is awesome. We can sit here, <clears throat> we can have this right now. And the citizens and the viewers, which are what matter, can hear us out and uh, get it all at one time. So I appreciate everybody and I want to thank Larkin and Clay for being here as well. Good job. Thanks. Clay Harrison, uh, my wife is Asa and my two boys, Jaden and Judah Harrison, they uh, go here uh, middle school and high school and uh, I love Houghton, been in Houghton for uh, since 2018. I've been a pastor in the United Methodist Church for 17 years and I'm also a construction engineer. I'm very excited to be here, thankful for our host and thank you for, for y'all for moderating. So thank y'all for, for being here. Absolutely. Tonight. Good deal. Awesome. All right, guys. Here we go. First question. And since it will be his first question, that means you will answer first, and it'll go. <clears throat> One candidate has flip-flopped on water rate increases and now states that we do not have to increase water rates. How do you think the town should address the water rates and when was the last rate increases? So as far as the candidate aspects go, not not too up to speed with that, but I can speak to how would you address the water rates in general. Uh, I think it's important to utilize the audit, which to my knowledge, we've had an audit over the last two years that has reflected a recommendation of increasing the water rate. I know a study was sent out as well to have the Louisiana Rural Water Association conduct a study. To my knowledge, it wasn't as demanding, for lack of a better word, possibly as the audit stating that the water rates needed to be increased, but it gave us a forecast. It gave the town a forecast. Um, and it showed that several years down the road that potentially the water system with the current rates that we were at was going to need some kind of inflationary uh, apparatus that would increase as chemicals and the cost of equipment go up. Um, so ultimately it boils down to, for me, if I was mayor, we're not here to make money off the backs of our citizens on water rates by, by any means. With that being said, water is a public safety issue, being able to provide clean water to the citizens, appropriate you know, amounts of water and things of that nature. So it has to be a self-sustaining uh, system, and that does come from rates. And ultimately, the way that I would tackle that is I would look at the previous studies. I would look at the previous audits. And uh, to my knowledge, I believe we have a committee that's currently in place studying it um, with members of the community and the council. I would obviously rely very heavily on their input as to what they felt uh, was the direction to go. At the end of the day, it boils down to me, it has to be sustainable. and we owe it to the public to provide clean water. And uh, as far as I believe the latter part of the question is when was the last time there's rate increase, is that correct? Yes, when was the last rate uh, increase? Could be wrong, so don't, if you want to, it's going to be quoted, we're online, but uh, I believe it was 2016, if I'm not, not mistaken, I don't have the material in front of me. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. Well, I don't. It sounds like maybe the 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 question was directed at me about flip flopping on water rates, and I'm not sure what 
what's implied by that or what you mean by by that at all so maybe you can expand on that in a minute but uh we've got a water sector grant for uh for halton and part of that water sector grant was for lwra to do a water rate study and i've shared that water rate study uh, on my website so that people can see it I've read through that study and the study came back saying we don't need to raise water rates and we were still within the time frame of our last water rate study when this study was done but we had to do it as part of the grant so the the rates came back said hey we're good now uh, we may have to look at raising them in a couple of years but there was no reason to raise the rates per the water rate study now the uh the comment was was made during uh the the audit the, the auditor was was having that, having the conversation during the workshop that there may be a potential need to raise it due to inflation. And uh, so that is what the committee is looking at right now is, is there a need due to inflation to raise the water rates? The water rate study doesn't say we need it, but it was a suggestion based on this aud the auditor. So uh, when it comes to the water rate study, uh, we've got uh, more than would, would be normal on our um, overage on the on the water that we're losing so we you know we produce so much water every 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 day and we sell that water and some of that, and the water we don't sell you know where's it go well, we may be flushing um lines out or whatever so there's water that we we don't get you know we, we lose it it's, it's lost maybe we have a water main that's broke or whatever so uh the, our losses are a little larger than what they need to be so water rate study shows that you know we need to be more mindful when we're flushing our our, our water uh, we got a lot of dead ends in our water system and things like that we need to be more mindful of that because it looks like we're we're losing more water than we should um but the study itself came back said that there was no need to raise water rates right now we'd be good for a couple of years so uh my recommendation to that committee would be that they look at ways that we can be more efficient if there's ways if the if the if the recommendation is that we need to raise rates by three percent for inflation well um you know that that may be equate to forty five fifty thousand dollars over the course of, of a year at three percent rate well um if that's the case, you know, is there ways that we could save some money? We got wells that we can look at and address. We've um, that some wells cost us more more money than others. As, as you get further south in this town, uh, the iron content, the the water quality just isn't as good. So you got to treat it more and things like that. And so, uh, you know, I, I would be looking at as, uh, rather than just raising rates, are there ways that we could save save that money? Is there ways that we could 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 be more effective and more efficient? But as far as flip-flopping on water rates, I'm not sure what's said there. Uh, I was glad to see that the study came back and said we don't need to raise them. All right, Larkin. Well, yeah, it, it was been 2016 since the water rates have been raised, and there's no need in that right now. But we have uh, used some uh, Arbor money to buy green filters for the water system to cut down to cut our chemicals down to 80 percent use. And it keeps the water clean and clean drinking water and it says it's no need right now for us to raise our rates and we didn't want to raise them right now and we're just trying to stay proactive instead of being like Shreveport or some of the other areas where they just put a 10 percent <coughs> tax on it you know raise the 10 percent but right now they're gonna keep it like it is okay all right the next First question is Hunters. What relevant work experience has prepared you for the role of Halton Mayor? And that will be you to answer first. Sure. Well, I've uh, been a you know, United Methodist pastor for 17 years and served in the church before then. I've had uh, over 20 years experience altogether. And uh, as a United Methodist pastor, I'm an ordained clergy as well. And so I've served churches in Louisiana and in Kentucky. I'm also a construction engineer. So uh, over that course of time uh, in serving churches, I work a lot with, with, with funding, with, with helping churches fund their budgets. And, and budgets in the church world is uh, our fund-based accounting. So that's, that's, that's what our government is, it's fund-based accounting. So you need to be familiar with that kind of accounting. So I've done that for 17 plus years in, in working with small churches and with large churches. And uh, I've managed people, I've managed staff. So, uh, so on the pastoral side of things, it really relates to what's required in this town. If you've got to manage a multi-million dollar budget, you've got to be able to manage staff and things of that nature. As a construction engineer, 
I understand our watershed issues that we're having in this town. We've got people who are flooding due to watershed, and it's really our fault that it's happening, and nobody's done anything about it. So people are looking at your lane or, or 614 are flooding. Those are watershed issues. We've got drainage issues, deferred maintenance. And so I, as a construction year, come and I can, I can see those things, and I understand what it takes to get those solved. I can understand the infrastructure issues that we're having with sewer and with water infiltrations. And then I'm also the chair of AMI Kids Caddo, which is a middle school in, uh, in Shreveport. And AMI Kids, I, um, I encourage everybody to look it up. It's a big organization. And uh, as a chair, we, I, we as a board oversee a multi-million dollar budget every year. And uh, this year I led an initiative with that board and we uh, were able to eliminate a, an exorbitant amount of debt this year uh, to get debt free. But what it, does, it did is it allowed us to work more efficiently and effectively and the money that we saved in interest rates allowed us to put more money into our program. So I understand what it's like to go through and manage budgets and to manage people and to, to help work more effectively and more efficiently. So I, so my, my work experience is going to bring me straight into that area of, of fiscal responsibility and management. What relevant work experience has prepared you for the role of Halton Mayor? Well, I'm just a construction worker, heavy equipment operator. I love my town. I'd like to see it continue to go in the, in the fashion in the way it's going now and keep it going in that direction. And I uh, appreciate our first responders. we got a good town here. Everybody, you know, first responders like us. They got to it, they wouldn't be here. And without them, we wouldn't be here. Yeah. So I just want to take care of them, take care of our town, and keep it going in the same direction it's going now. So I think a lot of that, the question obviously goes back to background, just some of the, some of the key points. Um, my military experience, I feel is very relevant to leadership, obviously. The job of mayor, you're you're I consider it kind of the the you're the face, you're the cheerleader, and but you're also you have multiple departments that you're responsible for and multiple individuals within that. So my military experience, uh, I feel pertains directly to leadership. Um, although it's a different place versus the military, it's still leadership and those are skills I'm I'm blessed and really proud to have. Um, I was lucky enough uh, during my deployment to Iraq. I was a, a sergeant NCO, so I was, held a supervisory rank. I was I learned a lot about leading, um, both in stressful situations and equally as important. I think the more <laughs> mundane stuff, as we're looking at paper and the the administrative side, which is really what keeps everything greased up and going day to day. So, key points. I feel that my leadership experience and more importantly uh, me being a leader uh, while I was in the military I think that's I think that's very pertinent uh, police officer Motor City police officer about seven uh, don't want to misquote it seven and a half or so years um, I have a unique understanding of public safety uh, there's there's we can read and we can watch and there's a unique understanding when you've worn the uniform and you've worked with the fire department and, and, and these things of that nature. So I have a unique understanding of public safety firsthand, um, which I feel is extremely important. Uh, commercial banking, as I stated earlier in the introduction, I have commercial banking experience. Uh, again, we're going back to the board and stuff on paper. It's, it's the numbers, uh, just like Clay was talking about earlier. It's the budgets, it's the numbers, we're, we're, we're going through it. Um, that was a great experience, uh, being able to underwrite loans and uh, work with board members within the bank. Uh, it's not the fun stuff, it's not the, it's not the appealing stuff, but it's, it's extremely important. And then, you know, lastly, I would say being a small business owner um, and to segregate that a little bit more, being in real estate, uh, a small business owner. I own a franchise, a nationwide franchise that's involved in real estate, so I have a unique understanding of also being a business owner and what's enticing to them and also the world of real estate, which I think is very relevant to what we have here. Thank you. Can I ask a follow-up question to that? Yes, you can. All right. Uh, my question is, uh, of those experiences I've just mentioned, can you uh, describe in greater detail uh, where maybe you've managed large budgets or led teams of people, or led um, employees and things of that nature? Sure. Uh, does it matter who goes first? 
Okay. Go ahead. Um, I believe that was a two-part question. Um, leading employees or people. Uh, I covered that first. Uh, being a NCO, a sergeant, that's a non-commissioned officer. Um, I not only led, but I was responsible for multiple troops that were my subordinates. Like I spoke about earlier, that's everything from, hey, we're in a hostile environment and there's incoming fire, and it's all the way down to, hey, we got to make sure that your pay is correct because we have your wife and child back home and you're not being supplemented for that. Like I said, the appealing, not necessarily appealing when it comes to combat, but the more interesting stuff versus the boring stuff, I absolutely have that experience, uh, no doubt, from, from leading troops. And uh, I'm sorry, Clay, can you, can you give me Man your second half? Managing budgets. Managing budget, so I feel that that's um, whether or not I was managing a budget for me. I think budgets are numbers. There's numbers on paper, uh, very important, but that's very relevant to my banking experience as well. Uh, underwriting, which is nothing but reading P and Ls from companies and determining global ca cash flow and their ability to repay and and things of that nature. So. In short, I feel that I do have the leadership experience in leading troops or employees, as you said, and then when it comes to understanding numbers on paper, which is a budget, I, I have that from banking. All you right, get a right. minute. I was a uh, district manager for a nationwide restaurant chain here in the United States. They did that for four years when I was in my early 20s. After that, I went out and worked at a manufacturing place at West Street Port. Gold battery, and I was in charge of uh, 25 people out there, making sure that they were doing what they're supposed to be doing, and reporting to my boss. And after that, I was a truck foreman, and then I had to take care of diesel prices, oil prices, oil changes on the trucks. We had six of them, and we went all over, all over the place, Freeport, Texas, wherever. And if they didn't show up, then guess what? I got to drive. They, you know, but I had to take care of that. I had to report to my superiors about what we were doing, how we were doing it, and how much fuel we were burning. It was, it was paperwork, 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 paperwork. That's not the glamorous side of it, but you know, being able to get out on the road and be free, you know, with, with the other guys, it was nice, you know. I didn't do it all the time, but it was nice when I did it. And I think, you know, okay. I can, go ahead, I'm sorry. Okay, well that was a minute. Okay. I'm going to tighten up a little bit. Um, all right, so you asked a question, mm -hmm. but that question was part of your minute. You know, we, we can report to respond in a minute, and I'm going to allow it to be a question, mm -hmm. but that gives your opponent a minute. Mm -hmm. So um, typically somebody wants to make a statement. But, but I think at this point that brings us to a really good question. I'm going to, since we've kind of gotten off a little mm -hmm. bit, I'm going to exploit that. Because I want to ask a question. I think I already know the answer for all of y'all. But have e e either one of y'all, have any of y'all served in public office or been elected to an office before? No. And just yes or no? No. No. That's what I thought. Okay. Um, all right. So your first question, mm -hmm. and Larkin, you'll be answering this. Um, actually, no. This is Clay's first question. Um, Clay, there have been rumors about the churches you served and that you want to get rid of the fire and police departments. How do you respond to these and other rumors? So that's not really a question for you guys. He chose to have a question to himself. And that is in the order of the questions that he gave me. So, but I would say at this time, you have three minutes. It's a question. You have three minutes. You have three minutes. And then he gets to answer the question that he posed for himself. So you have three minutes. For that question there? Or just? It's a question. He chose to pose the question to himself. Well, but you have three minutes. Uh, if you want to talk about the weather, um, you have three minutes. I'm good. I'm going to pass on that one. Okay. Can you state the, the question again, please? His question was to himself. Yes, sir. Um, 
Clay, there have been rumors about the churches you served and that you want to get rid of the fire and police departments. How do you respond to these and other rumors? I do want to answer. I'm sorry, I do want to answer that. I'll let him go first. Um, uh, however, you, your show. I'm fine conceding I'm sorry, and I'm coming sorry. back as far as your first, okay, go ahead. first and second All goes. Right. Whatever you want. Well, Clay, well, why would you want to get rid of the, the fire department and the police department in our town? Uh, and, is that your statement? Uh, yeah, I'm I mean, asking him. I mean, why would we want to do that when we're top 100 in the United States in the police department and our fire department is class two, which just gives you the cheapest homeowners insurance you can get in say Louisiana. And if you went to class one, that would do not benefit commercial. And that's why I'm wondering if we got rid of them, then uh, you gonna have to, who you gonna rely on to do it? The parish? I mean, they can't get here in time. If you have a problem, somebody's holding you know holding you hostage or breaking in your house or your house is on fire, they can't get here as quick as the Halton Fire Department and the Police Department. They're here pretty quick, <clears throat> and I don't see where we would benefit from doing anything like that. I'm done. Okay. You have three minutes. Um, obviously, I believe, you know, per the rules, we can ask ourselves questions. So I understand it might not necessarily be formatted in a material manner that's something needs to be answered. But um, it was obviously uh, proposed by by Clay, so so it could be discussed. And, and I'm assuming it's been brought up, or at least a rumor mill, we can we can assume. Um, I believe the first part, uh, kind, of, kind of a wordy question, I believe the first part was pertaining to um, – the church or churches that um, he has has presided over uh, wasn't a member of, of any of those churches. I have I have no documents that speak to what take took place in those churches. Um, so obviously, uh, I I don't have a statement or opinion on that. Um, I believe the second half of that question was pertaining that uh, possibly. Sounded like he had, he wanted to address some issues with the fire and police side. Um, I understand why he would want to address that, and I understand probably why at least that section of the question was um, proposed. And ultimately, when his campaign has heavily been focused on the the pay of the fire chief and the police chief, and there's. Uh, been a study he's conducted that's been published on uh, his Facebook. I'm I'm assuming the question's been made because he's probably gotten some heat over that. You know, at the at the end of the day, um, I just want to be clear on my stance because this isn't my question. Want to be very clear on my stance. Again, firsthand experience here as being a first responder. Um, it's not it's, it's seventy six thousand five hundred dollars a year is not a lavish uh, uh, pay. Um, it's not as simple as saying, well, we can pay these guys $10,000 less a piece. There's a lot of secondary and tertiary cons consequences to that. Um, and so, again, not necessarily a question for me. Um, maybe not the best format for it, but but I understand why the question was probably proposed so so Mr. Harrison can clear the air on it and, and make a statement on it. And ultimately, mine is very simple. Um, I'm, I'm firm. And the fact that seventy six thousand five hundred is not lavish in nature, and it is not excessive, and that's where I'll leave that. Being that it's Mr. Harrison's question. Okay, Mr. Harrison, your question. You know it. Or you want me to read it again? Read it again, so that because the <laughs> audience can hear. Clay, there have been rumors about the churches you serve, <laughs> and that you want to get rid of the fire and police departments. How do you respond to these and other rumors? Well, I'll start with saying that these rumors that are going around, they're bald-faced lies. And that the people who are saying these things know that, know that they're lying. And they're the same people who made these same statements and lies about me back in March of 2023 when I fought their unnecessary doubling of our local property taxes. But I've been a pastor for 17 years. I'm an ordained clergy person. And I've served churches in Louisiana and in Kentucky. And I have never had anything brought against me ever. Never had any accusations against me or anything. So 
now that I'm coming out heavy on issues in, in Houghton, now people want to all of a sudden start making claims that I've closed churches, and they can't even keep up with their lives. Now I think it's up to like five churches that I closed. Uh, pastors don't close churches, and, if, and, the, and whoever's making these claims they don't understand how the Methodist church works or how churches work. Pastors don't close churches. Churches do get closed, and the United Methodist Church and churches get together, and they do decide to close churches. Methodist Church closes a lot of churches. I have pastored churches that have closed, but that's between the churches and the United Methodist Church. So to make an accusation that I'm the reason that they clo- they, they close, that's, that's, that's ridiculous. If there's a problem with pastors and churches, pastors are removed. I've never had done anything but serve diligently and faithfully and, and very successfully in the in Methodist church. Um, there's accusations that I've stole money from churches. Again, just there's no basis in reality for this. There's no documentation. It's, it's, just, it's blatant lies of people trying to do character assassination. Same thing with me wanting to, to close a fire and police station. That's, that's ridiculous. Anybody who would say that or think that, and the mayor doesn't even have that authority. We're, we're governed by the Lawrence Act, and that's not even possible. But they, they made the same claims about me and others last year when we fought doubling the property tax. No, I'm not against police and fire. I support police and fire, and people in this community know that I've held events for the police and for the fire. But I do have a problem with the way that we manage our town. I want to bring fiscal responsibility and more more government efficiency to the town. And I'll address the pay raises if we get a chance in a moment. I know I'm running out of time. But these lies have, uh, th- these people who are doing this, they are bald-faced lying. They're immoral, in my opinion, unchristian. And the town should not be putting up with this. And I think they should be ashamed for showing their face around town telling these lies to folks. Okay. Is, is there a rebuttal uh, allowed on that? Um, excuse if, me on the rules. First time here. Well, if one of you chooses mm-hmm. and requests an additional minute to respond, mm-hmm. you can. And But if you do, I give the other two candidates sure. a minute apiece as well. I'd like an additional minute okay. to respond, Mr. Okay. Harrison. Again, as stated earlier, I, I have no knowledge of anything with the church never been a member of, of your church uh, never been provided nor have I attempted to review any documents about the church um, you stated yourself that you've heard outlandish claims about you possibly wanting to shut down the police and fire department uh, first off I have personally never made claims about the church and I've certainly, I certainly I have not claimed that you want to shut those down but in that same statement you stated that you do support fire and police but you do not support the fire and police current salary based on your statements that you've made. Is, is that correct? So and, 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 and are you, I rec- yes, yes, sir. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and give you the time. So as you, you said several times, I've heard you come out of your mouth about, after council meetings and stuff about, I mean, just in the parking lot, screaming and hollering, talking about how much money our fire chief makes and how how much you know and what he does and all this other stuff. You know, he he don't make no lavish. You know, his captain he makes two thousand dollars more than one of his captains. That's not very much money. And where you I don't know where you're coming up with lavish raises at. I haven't seen any, and I, I wish you could explain it to me because I don't know where it's coming from. But I've heard you talk about it several times. And I would just like for you to clarify it. Okay. Sure. I'll try to do it in a minute. But uh, yeah, well, our salaries for our, our department heads is more than what's necessary. And those salaries have raised significantly over the years. The, the police chief's salary has, has raised um, $10,000 since he was elected the last time. The, the fire chief, they make $76,500. They make uh, an extra $7,200 a year from the state. They get incentive pay. And by the time they get done, they're pushing eighty six dollars to $90,000 a year, especially with the fire chief working a second job. And I have a big issue with the fire chief taking the company truck, the, the, the public truck, and going to work in a second job. And he's working so much, he's getting overtime down there. I have an issue with that. Yes, I do. Those salaries have continually to, to continue to increase every year. And they're, they're above the rate that, it, that we can afford as a town. And when you look at other towns our size, it's not, you look at Spring Hill that's got the same, you know, 
I mean, we run out of time. Everyone, okay, you, you, you look at Spring Hill, it's the same size as us. Their, their police chief makes $58,000 a year. You look over here at Minden where the town is, they got a $45 million budget, but their police chief makes $72,000 a year. Yeah, when you look at the scope of things, we are, we are out of sync on our chiefs where it needs to be for what this town can afford and what this town expects. Okay. Finished up perfect there. So we're, we're at the top of the questions again. Um, second question of you candidates. Another important election is for police chief. Who are you supporting and why? That would be you. I'm up. Uh, I'll answer the question directly first and then elaborate a little bit. I'm supporting Chief Todd Gibson. Um, we're ranked in the 76% across the nation as safest place to live. Between the year 2020 and 22, uh, in the two year span, we saw a 7% decrease in general crime here. Um, during a time when statistically you were seeing in, increased crime across the nation. So that's that, that was all done underneath the uh, administration of Chief Todd Gibson. Uh, we have a two candidate race and we have starkly different levels of experience and qualifications one side being that there's none and the other is we have a 20 plus year veteran uh fully qualified and uh, most importantly to me has a track record has a statistical track record there's many more that i could state but hey we don't have notes and i can't memorize all of it the statistics are overwhelmingly put us in the top percentiles the safest place one of the safest places to live. So 100%, Todd Gibson is the only viable <laughs> decision to make between this race of two candidates. And um, it's an easy one for me to make. And I'm very proud of what he's done uh, with the town. And again, the numbers, the numbers back him up on that. And so, you know, to summarize at the end of the day, public safety is not First hand experience, public safety is not something that we can do on the job training at that level. I was a field training officer. I can train a rookie police officer. I've trained plenty of them. Now they had a basic police academy behind them, but I'm able to train that. You cannot supplement for 20 plus years of experience. You cannot train that. And some some folks might not have an in-depth understanding. I do maybe more than others and some will have more than me. Public safety has real consequences, and those consequences oftentimes are life and death. So 100% support Chief Todd Gibson, not willing to risk any of the citizens by supporting another candidate besides him in this two-candidate race. Thank you. You want me to read the question again? No, it's fine. I mean, this is a irrelevant question to the mayor's race um, altogether. By both candidates. Uh, are qualified to, to run for mayor. Both candidates can run their own race, and um, and and to, to sit here and dog one over the other is is, is not necessary. Um, I, I'd work with either one of them who was elected, but at the at the same time, you have to look holistically at, at everything. I don't care who's alderman and who's 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 the police chief. At the end of the day, as a mayor, you got to work with whoever's elected and who's in those positions, and that's what I'm committed to do is to do that. My personal opinion on those isn't going to make a hill of beans on this mayor's race, and it shouldn't, because what's, the, what's their race got to do with our race? They need to each run their own race, and I think that they are both qualified people to do that. And so I'm not going to sit here and talk for one over the other or anything else. I don't think that's fair to those candidates. Let them run their race. But uh, but going back to what he said earlier, since I got a little time, you mentioned that one of the, the chief's position is only $2,000 more than their captains, and that's just simply not true. If anybody wants wants information on how much these people get made, it's public request information request, and I can make that public for us if you want. I've got all the information. Um, but no, they, they significantly more. Now, we have a fire chief, uh, assistant fire chief that we hired uh, last year, mm -hmm. and we hired that chief, and he makes, uh, he, he's already had a pay raise, and he worked a whole year, and he's at $69,000 in a year so um, but yeah they, he makes a lot more than his uh, more than 2,000 he makes significantly more than his captains and, and, and everybody else so uh, when it comes to pay on those things I support our police and fire but but people have an issue that that I want to talk about these salaries well the, this, the thing is is 
is when it comes to government efficiency and working with fiscal responsibility, you have to deal with these things. We're talking about, and uh, on one thing, like a police chief, they're, they're elected. So you have an elected position that is having a pay raise throughout. I mean, I don't even, I don't even know why we're, we're, we're doing that. They were elected to, at a certain salary. See, and there's there's laws that impact these. You take that pay, that payroll for the, uh, that pay for the police chief. When uh, do the law risk enact, whatever that, that rate is, you can increase it, but you can't decrease it. So where's the cutoff? We don't have a pay scale. There's nothing, you know, where's the limit on this? The question isn't whether or not these people are, you know, should be paid more or should they be owed more? Well, I would love to pay them more if we could, but this is about what can we be fiscally responsible with? These are, we're talking about public servants. We're not people who might be working in the oil field or anything else. These are public servants. And what can we as a, as a town afford to do <clears throat> because we have a lot of other things that we have to take care of. And this one piece, yes, I think that we need to be more mindful in that and it needs to stop. I don't think that that needs to keep going up when you look at incentives and everything else. Okay. Okay, so when you get hired at a job, so you get hired for X amount of dollars, do you not expect to get a raise while you're at that job? When you're doing a good job, you think you're gonna stay there for that X amount of dollars for the whole time? Or do you expect you're going to get a raise? Yes or no? I mean, it's asking you. I mean, uh, it's, Clay. It's your time. Right. And I so just want to know. If you want him to use your time to yeah, answer your question. Well, uh, you know, I'd rather, I'd rather pay, you know, I'm, I'm voting for cheap Gibson too. I'd rather pay the money for the protection. He's gone out of his way and far and beyond what he needed to come and help people. Just like when the bus broke down a couple months ago or so, he took them kids and walked them to the school. He had an officer get hurt in the middle of the night. He got up out of his bed, went and took that officer's place while he went and got doctor's care. I mean, the man the man does what he has to do to make this, make this place safe. And I'd rather it be safe than not safe. And from what I understand is the guy that's running against him, he's not even qualified to carry a, a, a weapon. How's he gonna protect anybody? I'm done. Okay. Um, May I have a minute to uh, to respond to uh, Mr. Harrison's statement? Yep. Cutting straight to the chase here. Mm -hmm. uh, passing through earlier, I saw three signs in your yard. Mm -hmm. One was the Clay Harrison for mayor, one was the Century 21 for sale sign, and the other one was the Richard Wheeler for police chief. You made a statement that, I won't put words in your mouth, I summarized your statement in that the mayor doesn't really have a dog in that fight. Well, public safety is a huge, a huge factor in the mayor's job. You also made a statement that both these are qualified candidates. I, I will quote you on that. You did say both these are qualified candidates. Qualified based on what? Living in the town for a year or qualified to be the chief of a high level police department? Those are two separate things. And it's not fair to say that they're both qualified because, again, as to my original statement, they certainly are not. We have a guy who's lived here for a year and is over the age of 18 and can run for an office. And we have a 20 plus year police chief with a very well 20 plus year statistical record behind him. Did I get a minute? Yep, you have a minute. Can I, uh, before I do that minute, can I ask his question again that he asked earlier? What, what was it he asked of me in his comment? Because I've had two questions. His original question? No, he, when he responded a second ago, he asked me to, does anybody remember what he asked for me to respond to? I should have wrote it down. No, not my words, yeah, Larkin. I, I, I didn't either. <laughs> I don't know. All right, um, but I'll, I'll take my minutes. All right, so uh, again, I'm gonna let them run their own race. Um, Yes, if they're qualified, they're qualified. And whether you're a supporter of one or the other, I mean, okay, go be a, be a supporter. Don't sit there and down another candidate just because you're not for, pro for that candidate. Um, but uh, but 
aside from from all of that you made the statement that that public safety you know as if the mayor has an input on the police station the police that's a, that's a different department as he's elected that position and you don't have a say as a mayor into how the police do anything you don't have to say how they manage or anything you can you know you have you and the aldermen have a budget that you work with at the police department but but that that is an elected position separate from the management of the mayor. The mayor has, you know, can manage the fire department all, but the mayor doesn't get to, to manage the police department. The mayor doesn't get to step in and do that. And as part of, oh, I know what your question, your question was about pay raises. As a pastor, I'm used to being a servant. I didn't take a pay raise. You can ask, you can ask Eddie Moore or anybody uh, else. I, okay, I, but, but yeah, I think as a public servant, it's, it's definitely okay to say, I don't need a pay raise. Mark, can you get a minute? Well, the answer, to follow up with you on that, the uh, I think they deserve they deserve what they you know they deserve more what they're getting. We got to take care of them. We don't take care of them. They're not going to be here to take care of us. You know, I mean, you see what I'm saying? We have got to take care of these first responders. They love our town. They love they love the people who live here, or they wouldn't be here. But yet, you still have got to take care of them. If you can't take care of them, they're not going to be here. To take care of us then what are you going to do can i respond to that or not i'm going to move on to the next okay. question um all right the next question is and you'll be answering first okay you'll have three minutes um what is the biggest challenge the next mayor of halton faces i think the biggest challenge is going to be infrastructure we got several challenges uh we've got uh, infrastructure challenges we got watershed challenges we got budget challenges and those are those are all going to be challenges right off the bat but we're, go we're growing we're going to continue to grow and that's good for Halton but we've got to be able to uh, accommodate that growth and, and we need the commercial to grow but we have major infrastructure needs to be able to accommodate that especially on our sewer system we've got uh, sewer mains that are not adequately sized and everything else and it's going to take a plan of action it's going to take being prepared and creating a plan to be able to update make the upgrades that are necessary for this town and on our infrastructure issues we've got watershed issues where people are flooding you got buccaneer lane you've got 614 people are flooding uh, that's all watershed issues and that's being caused for because of growth well we need to be more conservative in the way that we deal with our watershed issues so that we're not flooding people from the runoff of of, of, of a subdivision or anything else we got deferred maintenance that uh greatly deferred maintenance whether it be digging ditches and things of that nature or mowing mowing uh, we have we, our maintenance department is 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 not really functioning as as it needs to because it's it's has having to do so much. So we're going to have to really address how we handle our water sewer maintenance and really improve in those areas. Uh, on the budget, we got a 1.2 million dollar deficit this year. That is the budget that was passed in December by the alderman. Now a million dollars of that, I give them credit, it's coming out of ARPA because we're putting in some wells and we're in a lift station and and we're working on Fox Creek. But there's still a 200 thousand dollar deficit that that we're still having to deal with this year that's coming out of the general budget and uh there's really no no excuse for a deficit budget being passed at all uh, by anybody and so we've got to be able to manage our budget and work more effectively and efficiently and uh those are going to be some of the bigger issues and then also you're going to um, my opinion is is you got to have a plan of action you can't just keep being responsive you got to be proactive we've got to create benchmarks and we got to understand where we're going what we do in in six months or in a year or three years or ten years we got to understand how we're going to address the issues that we're facing whether it be replacing uh, pipes or maybe uh, we need to do a smoke test to figure out where all our infiltrations are you talked about uh, filters saving on chemical costs well our chemical cost isn't going it really going to go down until we fix our, our infiltrations in this town but we need to do a smoke test to do that and we did not we've turned down doing a free smoke test by the LWRA but we need to figure out where our infiltrations are and how to solve them so we got infrastructure issues we've got budgetary issues um, and it just it continues to, to grow Larkin? Well, there, we do not have a $1.2 million deficit. That money from ARPA is being used. We had to use it or lose it. And they used it on the Fox, Fox Can project. We're using it to uh, drill two wells and two uh, water tanks, freestanding water tanks for them. And we also have got, what I mentioned before, the uh, filter to filter out the water and keep you know, keep it clean 
So we won't have to use the chemicals, which our chemical, like I stated before, went down 80% of chemical use. And we got another one, another filter being built coming to us so we can take care of what we need to take care of. But there's no deficit. That money is being used. We had to use it or lose it. Now, I don't know what, what the rest of it's doing, I haven't asked, but I just know what I just told you for a fact, that it's not, that they're, they're using this for different projects, this money. It was $350 billion allotted to ARPA. We were, we were allotted 1.2 million, and we got it, we took it, and we're doing good things with it. I don't know where you, I mean, where do you think there's a deficit at? I mean, there's not a deficit. That money is being used. It's, it's being it's put in a special fund, and then then it zeroed out to balance the books because they're using it. Question one more time, please, and you can allow the time to roll. It, it, it's five. You need to roll. The Two. question was, what is the biggest challenge the next mayor of Halton faces? I want to start with addressing a previous statement that Mr. Harris had made. Uh, public servants absolutely do need pay raises. They they have families and homes and vehicles, things things of those natures. They have to be able to have pay raises. I want to make that clear. I am a proponent of public se uh, servants getting pay raises. Uh, the biggest challenges, I think we've kind of got in the weeds a little bit between all three of us probably on this. Uh, it's it's simply it's going to be managing growth. Hodden. Houghton's growing. It's 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 going to grow. We're in the fastest growing parish north of I-10. Um, when I look at a map and I look at the growth we see here, Houghton is going to be the epicenter of that growth inside the fastest growing parish. Uh, as far as managing <coughs> the growth appropriately goes, what stores are we going to have here? What type of businesses are we going to have here? How are we going to facilitate them with things such as infrastructure? We're going to have more rooftops coming up. I'm really excited about uh, the 220 entrance for the base uh, opening up. I think we're going to be an airman town quickly. And I'm, as a veteran, I'm proud of that. So managing appropriate growth and scaling our public safety to go along with that, and then the infrastructure to follow in suit so that we, we can supply adequately and provide adequate public safety to this very quick, possibly one of the fastest growing municipalities in this area. So just growth in general, that, that was a question is absolutely, undoubtedly going to be the, the biggest challenge for the next mayor that holds office. Can I take a minute? If you want. Yeah. So yes, question about where the deficit is. I mean, the budget's clear and I can give you a copy of that budget if you haven't seen it. I told you a million dollars was, uh, was 1.2 million. A million dollars came out of the ARPA. Mm -hmm. Wells, Lift Station, Fox Creek. The filters were not a part of that. That's part of money that's being spent this year. Uh, that was already allotted to be spent. $200,000 is a deficit out of the general budget that was passed in December by our alderman. That's, that's just, it was a $200,000 deficit coming out of the spending of the general fund. You, that, that's facts. You can look at the budget. Okay. okay? What, where does it come from? You, you'd have to go through and just look and see. Uh, my the statement about pay raises was was if I got uh, took a job do I expect pay raises and I didn't say anything about them not having pay raises I said that I was used to not having to take pay raises because I'm used to being a public servant but we have given pay raises we gave uh, hundred thirty six thousand uh, dollars maybe I think it's a little more than that worth of pay raises this year we are good at giving pay raises I haven't said anything about whether or not those uh -huh. pay raises were good I'm talking about the chiefs I'm talking about the department heads Larkin? Well, so the, I don't know how to go about saying this. So the department heads don't need pay raises, but the people up underneath them do. I think they all do because, as Hunter said, that public safety is public safety. I mean, that's that's one of the major things. Yeah, that's what made us want to stay here in Halton. It's one of the safest towns in northwest Louisiana. We don't have crime out here, and if we do, it's nipped in the bud pretty quick. And you can't put you can't put a dollar amount on safety. You just, you can't do it. I mean, 
It's just, it's not feasible. I mean, you just can't do that. I mean, they, they take care of us the best way they know how and what they got to do with. And you made a statement that our fire chief drives his uh, public truck to his other job. Well, he's still on call for a town home. If he has to go to a call, then he's in his truck heading back this way. Tom. Addressing the the pay res issue with the minute we have, the statement you made was that you also acted in the capacity as a public servant and you didn't expect a pay raise. I can only assume that is directed to the public servants that you're talking about not getting, having to stop the bleed on pay raises. So that's where my statement came from. Going to the statement of driving a tax funded vehicle, that's to a part time job on the weekend. That's a lack of understanding of public safety. As a chief, you're responsible to respond to all emergencies 365 days a year, 24 7. Um, he has to have that unit of his equipment and a proper radio and lights and sirens so he can respond appropriately. And I would also follow up, I don't know of any chief on earth that is driving to go work a part-time job as a back-end man, which is a lowly position on a fire department because he has a lavish pay raise. So, uh, concludes my statement. Okay, moving on. This will be your his question, your answer. Okay. To start. Candidates, how did you each vote in the March 2023 Halton Millage ballot? I was, I did not vote on it. I was not here. I was out of town on a funeral. But if I would have been here, I'd have voted for it because we, I've learned not to listen to people talk because all we heard was it's going to double, it's going to double, it's going to double your, your taxes, it's going to double your property taxes. Not gonna double your property taxes. The average homeowner in in Halton would end up paying anywhere from twenty eight to thirty dollars a month extra, and that is that's not bad for what you can do for our first responders with that millage. And but yeah, if I'd have been here, I'd have voted for it. But I was out. Of, I had an emergency funeral to go to. Well, not emergency, but a funeral that we weren't expecting. So I was not here during that time. I was not in support of that particular millage. Uh, it's a no for me. The nuts and bolts of, of it are, that millage came at a really tough time for everybody, not only in our community, but, but nationwide. That was a big millage. It was, that was a very large millage. I think, I think me, that's, we might not agree on a lot, but me and Mr. Harris would probably agree on that. It's a big millage. Um, we were struggling as a country and as a community as a whole. Who the heck wants to know where I'm going to vote to spend more money? I'm struggling with groceries. I'm struggling with gas. I had a hard time buying this house because it's inflated. Raise my taxes on it. I get it. Um, I wasn't in support of that millage at that rate. And at that time, now, the more the, the people have spoken, uh, uh, 70 to 30 percent, I believe it got shot down. Um, I'm pretty sure that's pretty close to the numbers. You know, the people spoke. I'm glad to see we put it to the ballot. I'm glad to see the citizens were able to speak on it. They shot it down. It point blank simple. There's no reason to make that to make that any prettier than what it is. They were heard. And I'm glad we have a government that allows that. My concern is not a millage that has already been voted down. It's it's done. Um, my concern is why was the millage, why was it placed? Um, we don't have a public safety millage. Lots, most areas around us, to my knowledge, do have a dedicated public safety millage. So I understand that the the town was trying to pay catch up on that, um, and it was too much, too much at one time, and and it was voted down. But the the bigger issue is not a millage that that failed. The people spoke. Glad glad they were given the ability. I'm glad I was able to have my voice too. How do we address? the future for sustainable funding for public safety. We have a class two fire department. Pretty pretty salty compared to agencies around us. Mm -hmm. um, we're top percentile through the FBI statistics on uniform crime reports. 
very impressive, especially what we're surrounded by. Um, it's not a bash on any other communities. Just look at the numbers. We, we're excelling there. We have to have sustainable funding and understand why the millage proposed bad time too much. No, I wasn't in support of it. Yeah, I was opposed to it, uh, I and others, and I helped with others to lead initiative against that millage. That millage, uh, it did come at a horrible time, but it, more than about the timing that it came in, it was the fact that, that the, our town didn't seek alternative funding at all and refused. I, I had an alderman tell me that they were refusing to work with legislators. They did not want to seek alternative funding or assistance at all. They went straight to this millage. And the millage would have more than doubled our local property tax. Whoever says otherwise doesn't understand how property taxes are, are, are calculated. It would have more than doubled our local property tax. But the issue with that is that... Uh, they the the town lawyer out of Shreveport hired a pack out of Baton Rouge to come run a, a campaign uh, to do this millage, which uh, really should not have happened. I, I and others spent our own money. I spent fifteen hundred dollars my own money running signs and campaigns against it. Uh, but that we were they were telling people that if we didn't do this millage, that we were going to lose our fire and police. They were telling people that that voted against this that that we were defund the police. Those same people who said that are the same people saying the same thing about me and others just because I have an issue with the department head pay. And that's not okay. And it didn't pass before, and so they're going to just recirculate the same lies about people. Fiscal responsibility is extremely important in a town our size and with the amount of tax bases that we have. We have to be fiscally responsible. And that means that we also have to be working with state legislators, and we have to be working with state departments to take care of what we need. And we were refusing, and still have refused, to work with legislators to find funding on, on the things that we need. And as mayor, I would absolutely work with our legislators to, to find out ways that we can fund the things that we need. And part of the things is we have to figure out what we need. And if you don't have a plan for where you're going, how can you know what that need is? So we've got to have a plan as well. Can I have a minute? You have a minute. Okay. So you, you said that they're not working with, with state or anything to get any kind of funding. Well, I believe you was at the last council meeting with me, and I think Hunter was there too. I think our fire chief said he just got $75,000 for some new equipment from the state. So how can you sit here and tell us that they're not working with trying to get any kind of funding from the state or from the legislature? Because that's what they're doing. Because there's, even with, we got the lowest millage in Northwest Louisiana at 1.30. I got the figures in my truck and we'll get through with this. I'll show you how much it would have went up. It wasn't going to double anything, but we got the wrong information. But I wasn't here anyway. I mean, I had to go out of town, you know, like I said, for a funeral, but that's beside the point. But anyway, you're sitting here talking about, you know, they don't want to work with legislators, they're not trying to get funding, they're not doing this. That man is busting his butt trying to get funding. He's got breathing uh -huh. answer. You stated multiple times the town was refusing to work with elected officials. Um, the the only source you gave to that was an alderman. I think in the act of being transparent, we should state who that alderman is. Um, I I haven't heard that. Uh, that's not either. that's not something I've been made aware of. I don't think that's fair to make a to make a statement like that to generalize this the whole town administration that they don't work uh, based off an unnamed alderman. Um, and I can't imagine, um, it just doesn't, it seems like a pretty outlandish statement because it most likely is not true in nature. Um, why, why would our administration choose not to work um, to, to achieve some of those grants or funding? And I can tell you, furthermore, grants working with elected officials is not as sustainable. It is a great supplement supplement to add to that, but it's not it's not sustainable. It's not something we can forecast off of because we don't know what next year holds when it comes to right. with, with um, those kind of dollars. And I have a minute. Well, uh, there's a difference from grants and working with your legislators for capital outlay and things mm -hmm. of that nature. And the person who said that was Buck McGee. But McGee said that he was he, he was not interested, and they were not interested in working with writing legislation or working with legislators to find fundings. We can work for matching grants and all kind of things. Mm -hmm. There are sustainable things that we can look at. But but what we're talking about here is they wanted this for equipment. 
And so th that's a that's a one time purchase. It's not a sustainable thing where you've got to have a constant thing. We're talking about a plan for we're going to replace this here, this here, this here, this here. But no, they were not interested in working with legislators. And you can keep saying that the property taxes weren't going to double. Local property taxes would have more than doubled. That's simple math. And oh, yeah, you can re work in my trunk. good I'll bring the paperwork. You. I'll show, I'll show, I'll show it, it to you when we leave they, here. The, the millage was more than thirteen. Uh, meals that was more than double of what our current meals are, were and our meals just went down so again it would have continued to be more you're so you're, you're just repeating what the good old boys are saying but that's just not true that's numbers just not lie. true numbers don't lie got it, it's black and white <laughs> man I, okay uh, <laughs> i hate to stop you guys I you're mean, good at a you're good, good point here but uh <laughs> all right so uh the next question um this will be Larkin, so it'll be you ask, answering first. It has been said that the town has a $1.2 million deficit. I heard that mentioned earlier in some of y'all's conversation. What do you know about this? So the, I think some of, maybe some of the misunderstanding with the $1.2 million deficit uh, is just kind of very simply numbers in on a year and numbers out on another year so to to i don't want to misquote the year a couple years back um arpa america american rescue plan act uh quote unquote covid money the federal government uh dispensed that out to municipalities across the uh the country we were awarded 1.2 million dollars uh, we used a million dollars worth of that uh, to to matching funds to achieve nearly $7 million worth of work. So we, we, we put that up in the form of matching funds. And the other $200,000 is going to be expensed on just south of town here, a water filtration system. Will you repeat the question? Yeah, it's been said that the town has a $1.2 million deficit. What do you know about this? Yeah, well, as I said earlier, a million dollars is ARPA fund. Uh, we said that, but y'all keep bringing up that the two hundred thousand dollars is 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 ARPA fund as well, but it's not. There is a two hundred thousand dollar deficit in the general fund that was passed by the aldermen in December. Now, that what what it looks like now, I can't tell you because we don't get monthly uh, statements. The aldermen get to see it, but the town doesn't. And so unless you do a public request, you don't get to see what the monthly statements are like. So uh, we need more transparency around this. We need, as citizens, you shouldn't have to do a public request to get the finances on the town. You should be able to, to be like the alderman and see what the finances are. But the fact of the matter is, is they did pass a $1.2 million deficit. Yeah, a million dollars of it came from ARPA. That's called fund accounting. You gotta understand fund accounting. But $200,000 is a deficit out of the general fund. $200,000 is not, a deficit is not from a fil filtration system. It is from the general fund. And, uh, and that's just point blank and what it is. So uh, we've got to make sure that, you know, they, they, now I'm sure that they're balancing it throughout the year. They're going to make adjustments and things, but they still passed a $1.2 million for that deficit. And, um, and, and that's the budget that was passed by the alderman. Uh, the mayor came up with that. So I think they were expecting to have some other incomes and that just, did, that just didn't happen. Uh, but when we look at efficiency in government, it, there is no reason why this town can't provide quality water and and be a safe town nobody nobody is against fire and police or providing for the safety of this town but it takes money to do that and we have a limited tax basis to do that with so we have to make sure that what we're spending <laughs> that we are spending we're looking at fiscal responsibility and spending things the best we can otherwise we're never going to be able to get ahead for the growth that's coming and to take steps to to fix the things that need to get fixed and plan to grow the way we need to grow so we've got to be able to work within the budget means that we have and we've got to be able to to look at places where we can can spend more wisely and 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 also afford find ways to afford the things that we need because there's things that we can, we don't have that we need as well larkin was your question we can move on okay all right uh, just like he said move on um you know some of these questions I'm looking forward and kind of cover some of what we've already carried. So if it's your question, I'll only move on if the person whose question it is says they're good with moving on. Um, the next question, with two candidates running for the office of 
chief of police, who do you support and why? We hashed that out earlier. Um, do we want to go through that again? Let's move and on. that's your question. So uh, it's up to you. You would be the one to answer that. We want to go down that road again. We'll continue going down that road. Could be breaking. Up. I'm sorry. Were, were you asking if I wanted to submit the it's, question? It's, 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 it, is, it is your question. Okay. And he has to answer. Go, or go down the road. Keep going. Keep on going. Yeah. Pass it or keep going with it. Keep going with it. Okay. Ask the question again. All right. With the two candidates running for the office of police chief, who do you support and why? I'm supporting Richard Wheeler because I feel like he is fit for this job. And uh, this is a, you're talking about a department head. Yeah, there's other qualifications that he'll have to get that he's capable of getting, but it is a management position. These department heads are management positions. That's what they are. They manage the budgets of those departments. They manage the people of those departments. And as an elected official, he that, that responsibility falls to, to, to managing that part of our town. Again, as part of the Lawerson Act, the mayor does not have input into those things. That has to be managed by whoever's elected. And because I feel, uh, you know, that my support behind one candidate, again, that, that's, that has nothing to do with with this mayor or election or, or anything else. So people can, can speak out however they want to speak out and choose to, to support whoever they want. But it's a free America and people are free to run. So let them run their race. Uh, but as mayor, uh, we have to be able to work with, with the areas of the Lawson Act that manage the, the, the town that's that's per our expectation. And there are things that we don't get to manage, and that police department is one of them. And there are things that we do though that, that impact that, like setting the budget. So we have to work with the with the with whoever is that police chief to make sure that we have a budget that they can work with as well. So so there is cooperation, but we don't get to go and say how they spend their money or, or anything else. That is up to them. And as, as part of that as, as well is, is no matter who's in a position, you've got to be able to work together, whether it's alderman, mayor, and the, and the police chief. You have to work in unison as a team. And whoever is in those positions, they have to be willing to work together. And I'm willing to do that. And I'm willing to work to make sure that we're working effectively and efficiently. So whoever's in those positions, I'll work with them. Because we may disagree on a pay of the scale of the department head, that doesn't mean that I have a problem with per se with, with other people. All I mention is the things that are under the purview of the mayor and the purview of our responsibility as if we were elected mayor of of what we're going to do and i do think the department head we got to have some kind of pay cut off otherwise you're just going to keep raising it until it's one hundred and fifty thousand dollars or more so larkin okay um you're talking about you got to keep an eye on them make sure they're managing their budget well i know that todd gibson has finished under budget for the last three years in his department and you say that you don't have any that you can give all the people. I've seen you on several occasions stand out there in that parking lot and scream at both department heads and just scream and holler and just talk about, I mean, just, I'm just, just talk about, just gibberish about it. I mean, just, if they're doing this, they're doing that. You have no proof of what they're doing. You just said that you have no proof of what they're doing, but yet you're out there screaming and hollering at them. How can you get along with them? How can you make a budget with anybody like that? I mean, if you're gonna just start screaming and hollering at somebody for no reason, because you don't know what's going on. I've seen it with my own eyes on more than one occasion at the council meeting in the parking lot. You have come unglued on them. And I don't think that's right. I don't think it's fair. And I don't think anybody Anybody who's running for mayor should be acting like that. I just don't think that's right. But we'll let in a little bit. What's your question? Uh, Mr. Harrison stated that uh, police chief is a management position. Absolutely. Um, or, or if I misquoted you, I believe you said management. It absolutely is a, uh, both administrative and management. Uh, that's a huge huge part of being a police chief um it's not what that position is that's a that's a facet that's a section of it that's a part of the job police chief you the buck ends with you when it comes to public safety 
in this town. When it comes down to the, the very important things, such as life or death, the police chief is the one where the buck ends with him. <clears throat> it's, it's a little demeaning to call that a, a administrative or a management position. There's so much more to it. And more importantly, there's the consequences are severe. So that's either a lack of understanding of the job um, or it's just just not a misspoken possibly, um, I would assume. Um, when it comes to the, the simple intricacies of what the day-to-day -day are, yes, we can boil that down to management. But we have to understand in a totality that yes, it does matter as a mayor a oral candidate sitting here with our citizens of this town that are going to make a vote. It does matter who you support for police chief. And I typically would never ask somebody, who are you going to vote for? Well, in a, a two candidate race for police chief, this is it's unlike I've ever seen before. It does matter because it's a reflection of judgment, in my opinion. We have an individual, again, I'll say again, with 20 plus years of law enforcement experience, a guy that has been to the academy. We don't need to send, we don't need to send our police chief to the academy. Um, he's already been. We, we got one. Um, he's qualified with countless other certifications that, he, that, that he's gotten. So why is it important for us to answer the question? Um, that's not fair to say that that's just a race that has nothing to do with us. That's a reflection of judgment. Absolutely. Um, there's only one clear answer to, have, to to pick in this race if if you had to god forbid if you had to have an open heart surgery and you had two you had two candidates to pick from one had been a medical doctor for 20 plus years had a very statistically high success rate on doing open heart surgeries um was very well respected in his field and the other candidate thought he might go to med school one day thought he might want to be a doctor one day who would you pick to conduct the open heart surgery well i think we all could agree we would pick the actual doctor that had track record and that's that's exactly what we're seeing in this race uh, right now in police chief i'll take a minute okay. that's fine Jay. you earlier uh one you haven't seen multiple times of me being upset and losing my temper at anybody you saw one time where I was accosted outside of town hall meeting. I did not instigate that at all. And you can ask the, your viewers who were there. I did not instigate that. Now, did I have to talk loudly to over over somebody? Absolutely. They they absolutely after town hall when I was walking to my vehicle accused me of of don't doctor the video and everything else. And again, they were wanting to do this outside of town hall meeting instead of in the form of public debate. And in my face, yelling at me, I don't bully. I don't bully well at all. You don't like something about me. That's fine. You disagree with something. That's fine. We want to talk through something. We'll talk through it. But I don't bully. And I'm not going to be a yes man. And I'm not going to bow down to somebody just because they have a different view of me. So you get in my face. Buddy, I ain't backing down because you're getting in my face. And that's exactly what happened out at town hall meeting. And there are plenty of people watching right now who were there and saw the whole thing happen. Tom. Minute. Move on. Oh, good. Thank you. Okay. All right. Sure question. Candidates, what experience do you have that best qualifies you to serve as mayor? your question is to answer what experience do you have that best qualifies you to serve as mayor well, I think we've been down this road once before already but I love our town I want to see our town grow I want to be able to work with the first responders fire chief the, the town the police chief and keep this town moving in the direction that it's going and we all work together, we make this one of the best towns ever to live in in North Louisiana. Keep it short and sweet also. Um, I know that another candidate asked the same question. Uh, as I stated earlier, uh, obviously I would rely heavily on the um, the, the skills I uh, developed and learned in the military from a leadership standpoint, unique understanding of public safety, uh, being a former police officer understanding of interpreting 
budgets, financial documents, uh, things of that nature, based on my experience as a commercial banker, uh, advocate for business, um, being a small business owner, uh, heavily involved in real estate. Um, I think the real estate also gives me a unique uh, insight to what what our rooftop what what is the rooftop the houses we have coming up you know what statistically what does it look like the direction we're going in and um, so again just I feel that we pretty much all answered that and just hit a few of those key points thank you well there's a difference between leading and taking orders from somebody and uh, I have. 20 plus years experience of, of leading and and having to be the person who's in charge and working with a code of conduct and, and making sure that that everything is going as it should be and as a mayor you that's, that's your goal you have to work as 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 the person responsible for everything that means that that the, you got to take the the hits where they come and you you, you get you get both the ends of the stick per se uh, I'm used to working with fund accounting. I'm used to working with budgets and those things. I'm used to leading people. I'm used to working with with, with departments and that nature. So, I have the I have the experience there. Again, with the construction engineering background, I've got the understanding of, of the watershed issues, the the sewer infrastructure issues that we're having, and uh, and and managing people in the budget. So, I think we all have talked about this several times, and um, I appreciate the question. Now. Um, would you guys be agreeable to shorten the answers on the remaining questions? Looking at each of your, your remaining questions, it's kind of covering some of the same ground. We're, we're, we're plowing through that. Your last questions look to be some, interestingly, all three of your questions I think are good. And uh, But I would say this next line of question. Let's shorten the answers to say a minute on that, on the number four questions, and then on the fifth question we'll jump back to three minutes. Is that agreeable to y'all? That's agreeable to me. Okay. Um, all right, so this is yours, be your answer. It has been said that department heads have been given lavish pay raises. What do you think we should pay them? One minute. I think some of that we've we've probably gone and out of the weeds of several times. I understand we all gave five independent questions. Um, as as I stated earlier, I don't feel that it's lavish in nature. Um, let's call it what it is. It's seventy six thousand five hundred dollars a year um, because tenure matters. Uh, we're talking about guys with twenty plus years. Um, I could take a Chief Holland and go drop him off at Bossier City and. Um, he would be possibly somewhere around the, around the rank of a senior captain or, or maybe a little above, and he would be making similar, if not more, and would have a fraction of the responsibilities he has here. Uh, Chief Gibson, same thing. 20-plus uh, years, if I dropped him off at the state police department, or state police, excuse me, 20 years ago, he'd be a six-figure guy doing that, and he would not be the commander of state police. He would be in a mid-level to low-level leadership position and have a fraction of the responsibilities that he has currently as chief of a of our town um that's a minute minute got it thank you well i i think that we definitely need to assess uh our our top pay in this town and assess what it is that we can afford and i think we need to have some policy changes and we're especially when we're talking about elected positions that those those pay salaries are then uh, protect it by law and that's what we're paying from this on forward and so as much as it's great to be able to pay somebody is what they're worth and yeah we don't pay any of these people what they're worth we absolutely should be paying them more the question isn't either whether we should be paying them more the question is can we pay them more and is that the right use of funds at this time so um, I think I've said that before and I'm going to end with that um, same lines if, if it's both of them you know Hunter and Everything we done been over this. I mean, how many times we beat a dead horse? You got a minute? Well, I don't think they're lavish either. I think they deserve more than what they're getting. They put in, you know, they put in hard, you know, put in hours for us. They take care of us. They deserve more. And you know, some of these other towns, they're not, you know, they're not paying as paying with that, but they ain't got the, they ain't got the the 
Police Department or the Fire Department that we have. They are an outstanding, both, both of them are very outstanding first responders. And they are there for you when you need them. And we need to be there for them. Okay. Can I take a minute, Duke? Don't jump across the table at me. No, no. Thirsty. <laughs> uh, it's y'all's debate. Go you. ahead. <laughs> uh, do this is directed to towards Mr. Harrison. Do you have a what you feel would be an appropriate salary um, in mind for the police and fire chief? Um, for the viewers, we know they're sitting at seventy six five hundred. Um, I just think it's fair to ask that um, as you've covered that question in depth. I mean, is there an appropriate salary and a dollar amount that you'd be willing to state that you do think is appropriate? Thank you. Clay? Well, as I stated before, is 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 going up and it's not stopping. And that's where I've, I've come in and said, this, this, where, where are we stopping at? Is there is there a way, is there a place that it stops? We don't have pay scales. It's not like other places where you can know exactly what you're gonna make, where and things like that. We don't do that. So where's it stop? And for me, it's it's not. It doesn't like there's any end in sight. So I would like to see that assessed. We haven't had an assessment on those salaries at all. I, that's a great work. What you just mentioned. That's a great work for aldermen to come together with citizens and put a committee together and determine what that looks like. But this is this right now is just it's just going willy nilly. And where's you know where's it going? Where's their plan? And how far is it going to go? Because it doesn't look like there's any end in sight. Appreciate your answer. Minute. I'm good. Okay. All right. Your question, but your answer. Why do you think Halton is one of the fastest growing municipalities in North Louisiana? Well, we've been the fastest growing for a long time. And uh, when you look at the other areas, they've been and everybody else has grown out and we're next and we're going to continue to be the, the, the fastest growing place. We've got the most opportunities for people. Uh, you got the most opportunity for housing, for people coming in and we're still a small community and we have the ability as we grow to maintain that community. We have a great community. This is a wonderful place to live. It really is. And while we may have some disagreements and differences in this race on some things, it really is a wonderful place to live. Uh, it's a safe place and the commercial is going to be growing. So in the next couple of years, we're going to continue to grow and be bigger. And, and I think we have the ability to, to make sure in the doing so, we don't lose this small community feel that we have because we really are. This is a community that will come together in a moment's notice to help everybody here. And we've all seen that if you've lived here. So, so, so that's something that, that other places don't have. And I want to see that continue to, to be the part that enriches the soul of this community. What was the question? <laughs> Why do you think Halton is one of the fastest okay. growing municipalities in North Louisiana? It's a it's a nice town. People are nice here. It's a safe place to live. And if people come and visit, they know that there's no crime here. There's I mean, there's very little crime if any. They keep you know, they keep in, keep tabs on it. I mean it's just a nice place to live. And it's been like this since I've been but I've been out here all my life and it's been the same way. And I would, I would uh, invite anybody who wanted to come out here and live out here to do so because they would, they would love it just as much as we do. Everybody's nice. Everybody gets, everybody knows everybody out here, for the most part. It's one, one big happy family. Sometimes, sometimes, but not all the time. It's the way it was when I grew up out here. <laughs> all right. Uh, was your question? A minute. <laughs> So I think there's one thing all three of us can ag agree on on this one. Um, uh, can't disagree with anything Mr. Harrison said, Mr. Tidwell said there. You know, uh, a little more in depth, I think uh, geographically, look, I mean, look at where we're at. So um, <clears throat> we have Bossier Parish itself, you know, South Bossier is, is difficult with flooding and things of that nature. A lot of people say Ben is potentially priced out. So I think we're in a perfect geog geographical location right off I-20. Um, we have great schools and it's pretty unique. We have, I mean, we have three right here in a pretty small municipality and they're new schools and they're very, very reputable. And, uh, you know, I just think at the end of, at the, end of the day, it, it is the people, just like, just like Mr. Harrison said, I mean, it's the people. And, um, and it's, it's a safe place and, and public safety is a cornerstone of that. And, um, again, I'm glad we can all agree on something. And then, and, uh, have nothing to rebut to these gentlemen right here. <laughs>
Well, I'm glad to hear that. I moved out of Halton, <laughs> I moved out of Halton in 1988, and I have to tell you, it, it's sort of unrecognizable to mm-hmm. me these days. It's grown so much. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's good to hear that the uh, the folks are the same folks that mm-hmm. uh, I knew then. But moving on to the next question. Um, candidates, what are the major needs of the town of Halton, and how will you address them? Uh, it's your question, so you answer first. We've kind of already covered it. But. Well, we've we already covered it. I mean, the major needs is to work together, to come up with a, with a budget, come up with, with something everybody can agree with and everybody is good with, and no more arguing about, you know, the little stuff and let's take care of what we need to take care of and move on down the street and, you know, keep this, keep this town going in the direction that it's going in now. Like I said, we've already gone over some of this, but uh, I think major major needs is relevant to the last question we we answered. Why do you, you think we're the the fastest one of the fastest growing municipalities around here? So again, uh, as I stated earlier, major needs is going to be able to manage a pretty pretty substantial growth, uh, potentially rapid at times, depending on house and market and, and development of businesses and things of that, and scaling your infrastructure with it, scaling your public safety with it. Um, all while importantly retaining the values of why did we come here in the first place, which was, like Mr. Harrison said, uh, that those small town values and things that make Houghton great. So you you have to scale uh, with the growth and have all your logistics follow that, but you but you got to maintain who you are too, and that's you know that's Houghton, and and I think everybody here is proud of that. So, well. Uh, Watershed is a big issue. I mean, you got the people in Buccaneer Lane who have lost um, all kinds of stuff to flooding, and they're not even a flood zone. So, watershed is a big issue. Uh, that that was an issue that hasn't been addressed for years. The mayor knew about it. Alderman uh, Buck McGee knew about it. He mentioned in uh, two two town hall meetings ago that he knew about it. Nothing was ever done. As soon as I found out about it, I contacted the state representative in DOTD, and they were out there. And we now, as you saw in the town hall meeting two uh, two months ago, now there's work being done. Uh, water, that's a big issue. People shouldn't be flooding in this town. Um, 614 is happening when Buccaneer Drive, who knows where else. We've got uh, deferred maintenance, and we need to dig out ditches. we got culverts we may need to replace, like over on Freedom Street. Um, we we have major infrastructure. I'm going to keep going back to infrastructure. We have major infrastructure challenges that we are going to have to address. We need a smoke test. We need to take that, that take LWRA up on their offer, and we need to smoke test everything and come up with a solution and a plan to fix our infrastructure needs uh-huh. and so that we can grow. All right, so I, I sped us up on, in that line of questioning, and uh, here's the final question of all of you candidates. And uh, I'm going to stretch the time out, let's just say, to two minutes on this one. Does that sound fair? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, This is your first question, so you will be the first answer. There has been mention of more transparency needed. How could you, as the mayor, have more transparency? So, absolutely. I think transparency in all levels of government are critical, uh, very important. I think also uh, equally as important, it's the involvement of the citizens that are asking for the transparency. So roundabout way I'm going there, that is, I think there's a lot of simple things we can do with with transparency. Um, I'm 100% a proponent of, the town of Hodden should be, should be absolutely live streaming and formatting such as we're seeing tonight, their public meetings, absolutely. Um, we should look in and, and make sure that the timing of those public meetings, for the most part, we can't we can't appeal to everybody. But you, if there is something in general that it allows more of our citizens to be there, we should do that. Um, social media, hey, it's 2024. You're using a cell phone as a as a as a timer right now. Well, we're also getting news and communication through that. So. Um, I think our social media, the Town of Hot and social media page could be done far better. I truly do. And, and I think that's important. Um, and I say all that to say this, um, I think encouraging citizens 
within our community to be involved is also going to help correct transparency in itself because we have more eyes, we have more ears, we have more people speaking to what they saw in conjunction with those things. And then lastly, if uh, if I was blessed enough to be elected to be the mayor here, uh, just like I did in the military as a leader, I would have an open door policy uh, as mayor and, and, and I would keep that in effect for my tenure. Clay? Well, I'm all about government uh, transparency, and the more transparency we can bring, I think it's better for everybody else. It also allows everybody to have uh, more, the public to have more ability to be involved. Because like you said, not everybody has an opportunity to come when we have mm -hmm. things, but they have the right to know what's going on. And right now, everything's behind a public request wall. So uh, I'm glad, hey, we live streamed for the first time this week since uh, August of 2020. And uh, I guess all it, all it took for me to come in there with my video camera, I would have done it a lot sooner. But we need, you know, there's really no, no reason why we're not doing that. And if there's things that we need help with on that, I know that there's been things that the state during COVID had ability that, that we could have asked for help to do that if we needed. So I know there's eight, if there's, if there's resources we need that's limiting us from being able to be more transparent, then we need to, to know what that is so we can work towards that. Uh, I think that when it comes to our finances, we need to be a lot more transparent. I think we need to put everything out there so that citizens can see it. What are we hiding? There's no, the more that the government restricts, the, the more it puts in people's mind that there's something going on. So the more transparent we can be, the more apt we're going to be able to resolve issues and be able to get on the same page. But it doesn't mean that we're always being in the same agreement. But what it does, it gives you the ability to have the public dialogue you need to be able to, to help the town move forward. Uh, be more transparent if I was elected mayor of Halton. First day policy would be my door is always open. If you have any questions or concerns, come see me or call me, and we'll discuss it. But come to the come to the meetings, come to the town hall meetings, so you can get involved in it. Or like Hunter said, you know, we could stream it and that people you know, people could see it too. That's you know that's another idea to do it, but. As far as you know, don't keep anything from the people. There's no need in it. I mean, because nothing here to hide. Okay. Um, next question. Clay, it'll be your answer. It's your question. How do you feel about how you have run your campaign for mayor? I mean, I feel good. I came out um, on issues. So people know exactly what I'm focused on, um, and I've been transparent with everything. I've, as I've done public requests, there's, there's, if it was stuff that people may have questions about, I made that public. I put the the water rate study out there and everything else. So, uh, so yeah, I I have no problem. I, I uh, in the way that I've, I've run my campaign so far, I've done nothing but tell the truth, the God's honest truth. Whether somebody likes it or not, that's up to them. But I've done nothing but be truthful and factual. Morgan. I have ran my campaign as truthful and as honest as I can be. I'm, you know, I'm a good person. I ain't trying to find no dirt on anybody. I'm not trying to sling any mud on anybody. I just want to run a, a clean, safe, fun campaign. I would just summarize it as I'm. I'm proud of the campaign that that I've run. It's um. It's ethical. In, in nature and um, I feel that's important it's we're we're kind of all getting a, a test drive here on <laughs> you get a couple months to watch us three guys uh, see how they conduct themselves um, see what they just like mr. Harrison said hey these are the issues I I put out there and I felt were important and then and, and so I think it's a test drive that the citizens get a glimpse in for a while and they got to make a really tough decision so in, in summary I'm I'm proud of the campaign I've run uh, I, to be moral and ethical in nature and that's something that I want to promise to uh, citizens and potential voters watching that that's something I will continue through this campaign and if elected through my tenureship as mayor. Thank you. All right, moving to the last question. Um, candidates what do you do in your first 100 days as a mayor if elected? Larkin? Sit down with uh, your councilman, have, uh, have meetings with them, have uh, 
and see what's, what is on the agenda and what needs to be addressed first, most importantly, and then have a, maybe some kind of workshop to figure out what we need to do and how we need to address the issues. Uh, I think that's that's a, that's a very important question. Um, I also think it's it's we're kind of looking at everything from a thirty thousand foot view sometimes, being that we're not actually in town hall every day. So um, knowing that I don't know all the issues Hodden has at hand, um, all the future things we have coming up, I I don't know all of them. I'm not I'm not there every day. I have no problem being humble and saying that. Uh, the first thing I would do um, would be to uh, assemble my department heads, separately meet with them, and I would want them to, I would set out criteria for it, but I want them to outline their last four years, and I would want them to give a projection of what they plan on doing in the next four years, um, problems they plan on that possibly could arise, uh, future growth estimations. And I would compile all that um, and then try to get a pulse beat for, for kind of where we're at because whomever's elected is going to be drinking from a fire hose. And, and, and I think the best thing I can do, hey, let's, Mayor Gaspard's leaving. He's, he is no longer running. There's no chance he's going to get elected again. So what can I work with? I can work with my department heads that are there. They, they've been there through sometimes multiple mayorships. So, you know, in short, I would want to kind of get, give me your back backyard picture of what happened here and show me where, where you think we're going and how we're going to do it. And then at that point, I feel confident now we can make a plan of attack as far as how we're going to move forward. And that would very, very well could take within a hundred days. I mean, that's, that's, there, there's a lot of planning that has to take place. Certainly. Okay. Well, getting up to January one, hopefully there's been a lot of conversations that have taken place after elected to, to be able to get some footing, but we'll be working off of budgets that uh, either some, one of us will be working off of a budget that's set this year. So right off the bat, you've got to have a budgetary review. And you need to be working with your departments uh, and your auditor to make sure that it, that that we understand what budget we are working with. And then, I, because I'm big on government efficiency, I'd want to be working with these departments to figure out what are the ways that we can work more efficiently, or there are things that we can do differently within this budget. And then, part of this is to, because it's all connected together, is is working to create a plan. And we need to can immediately be working as because we're going to have new aldermen and a new mayor. I mean, you may have some incumbents, but you're but at the end of the day, you got. Uh, out of nine people, you're going to let five be aldermen. So very likely a lot of people aren't going to have the experience going in that to know what's going on. So you need to, 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 to look at that, that budget, do a review. So I'd start working on, uh, on government efficiency, and I'd be looking at putting a plan together and doing it all at the same time. I'd work with our legislators. Uh, one of the things I do right off the bat is get with legislators to get the legislation going to create districts in this town. Uh, we've got five aldermen uh, from one neighborhood area. We've got two that live on 157 and two that live down on um, Camp Zion Road that are running for election, and that's not representative of our town. So I would be working with legislators to, to start putting districts to our town because this town needs to be fully represented with our aldermen instead of everybody being at large. So um, so I would immediately go into looking at budget review, working with departments, looking at government efficiency, looking at ways that we can plan and get a, get, a, get some goals going. And we need to get some benchmarks, head, head it really quick. What's going to happen in, in two months, three months, in a year, in, in four years, in ten years? We need, to, we need to start working and we got to work together to get that happening. Okay. That concludes all of the que candidate submitted questions. Now, there, we've got two more parts to this. And then this one is pretty simple, and I'm going to start in the order I told you guys at the beginning. You know, we'll go, and fortunately it panned out one, two, three <laughs> as you're sitting. So in this phase, each candidate gets to ask any of the other candidates a direct question to that particular candidate if you choose. You don't have to, but if you feel inclined to. Larkin, you're first, so you get to ask any candidate a question directly, and that candidate gets to respond, and we'll agree to... Two minutes. Is that agreeable? I'm good. Mm -hmm. We pretty much went over everything that I can think of. Okay. I'm gonna pass on it. I'm content as well. Thank you. I give them a break. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we'll go to their next section. All right. So the next session, what section was to uh, you know the audience watching? I'm sure that they've had questions or comments and. 
if you guys are so inclined to take some of the questions that were posted online, Rex has been watching those, and uh, we will only take a question that is applicable to all of you. And, you know, it's not going to be a gotcha question on any of the, on either one of you, but it would be a question that would be, you know, relevant to all three of you, if you're agreeable. I'm good with that. Absolutely. Sure. Okay. Let's see if I can find one. <laughs> and uh, just so everybody knows that's watching, my audio may not be the greatest, but that's okay. I'm going to put the questions up on the screen. You guys will be able to hear me. So this question comes from Patrick. Let me get it up on the screen. And let me make it a little bit bigger here. All right, the question is, what growth do you see for the town under your administration? What growth do you see for the town under your administration? Larkin, we'll start with you first. I see it. I see it growing fairly well. I mean, I want to keep that. I want to keep it growing, going in the same direction it's going, and that's working with the town, working with the the Ottoman, even the new Ottoman, Ottoman, and uh, I see it growing substantially under my being mayor. So I mean, I think I think number one, some of this is is on track. For example, I mean. Certainly, whoever's whomever's elected is going to see some 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 more homes come up, as we can see being developed now. So, I would expect in uh, the next four years we're going to see a, a pretty big increase in uh, residents and and um, and homes in in general and and uh, some new developments of that nature that supply housing. Um, what would I like to see? Uh, me personally, I think there's a, a, a huge demand for for retail style business in, in general that the things that we're jumping on i-20 and running to Bozier and shreveport um to deploy our hard-earned tax dollars to uh love our sister you know municipalities next to us but um if we can keep them here and we can save 15 minutes of driving i would love that because we're we're deploying our hard-earned earned money back into our town and it's convenient i mean we'll We'll go walk down the street to go get some meat. That'd be awesome, you know. So beat the I twenty traffic. So in general, we're going to see some certainly uh, residential growth, but I would love to see um, some some good some good business growth. And I and I think the town will support. And, I, and more importantly, surrounding areas are certainly going to support. And how do you get better than that? We got somebody coming here spending money with us, and I'd love to see that. Yeah, Clay. Well, the certain growth is, is is out of our control. I mean, it's, it's mm -hmm. what's already being planned and what's coming. And as these roads get finished, you're going to see more businesses being prepared because the, they've been working on that. And our landowners are working hard and realtors are working hard. And we've got a lot of growth that will be coming. Part of the challenge will be, you know, what will happen in four years is be depends on what kind of infrastructure we can put in place for some of those. It depends. If somebody comes in and wants to put something that's going to put a huge load on our sewer system, are we going to be able to, to, to manage that? We want to be able to figure out how to address that quickly because we don't want to lose them as clients in our uh, in our town at all. But what I'm what I would expect especially would be that we would have a strategic plan in place uh, so that we can be sure that we're growing and we're growing in a way that is conducive to, to being business friendly and getting those businesses in here. Uh, you're going to have the residential growth. I mean, it's, it's, it's already there, and it's going to take you know a couple of years for that to get built out. I think you'll see more of that happening. I mean, we've got a lot of different properties for sale around here, and I know that landowners are eager to get that sold. But uh, as far as the mayor's concerned, I, I would hope that our growth is in our fiscal responsibility and in our planning to be prepared for that so that we can accommodate that growth as quickly as possible so we don't miss on anything. Hmm. Okay, and I'll also say that there are north of 300 comments so far. <laughs> We've been through? running between 160, <laughs> awesome. 160 and 180 people simultaneously the whole time. That's awesome. So that I would encourage awesome. y'all to check the comments later and maybe address some of the comments if you well, choose. We'll do another one. <laughs> <laughs> we'll meet back tomorrow. <laughs> All right, next question from Jason Dobbins. Do you support growing the town through annexation. It, I'm not sure if we can, I mean, I guess you could annex it, but yes, I am. 
Um, yes, I am. Excellent question. Uh, sincerely, excellent question. Oh man, that's something where we, would we grow the town through annexation or, or would I support that if I was mayor? Loaded question, have, have to have some yeah. people a little bit smarter than me give me information such as, what's the logistical, if we go north of I-20, what's my logistical asset to be able to supply the water and sewer and things of that? Um, sure, I know it's doable. We see municipalities all over the place that have that. Um, a huge factor into annexation, again, would be a lot of the key points that I hit on. It needs to be sustainable, um, and it needs to be feasible, and it needs to be fiscally responsible as well. Um, the reason why I think it's an excellent question is because we are smaller. This is, you know, you, you run out of dirt eventually. And um, I can see as we continue to talk about growth, 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 well, when where does it stop? And you, so um, just to answer that and, and be fair, that, that would be something that, that I would not answer tonight. Um, I would be an absolute proponent for it if I felt that it was better for the town and I felt that the town had the uh, fiduciary means and the responsible way of doing it. A absolutely. But a lot of, lot of logistical questions that I would want to get hands on with and get answered by people that quite frankly just know more than I do as I sit here now. So a lot of moving parts there. Go ahead. Well, our town map is a, is a very strange outline for the people who want it to be part of it and people who don't. So uh, there's been uh, times where we've asked people to annex and they've not wanted to. And then one of the questions that we have to answer is when we estimate annex is what, did, what are we now providing for them? Because what they're providing for us is it's a tax basis is what they're providing, you're right? Because as soon as they're annexed, I mean, you, man, you can bet that this town's looking for that property tax and everything else. And that's just part of it. That's the reality of annexation. Uh, it's my understanding that the town and the, pair, the, the, um, the police jury and others have got together and they've talked about what a future map could look like and things of that nature. Um, I've not been privy to any of that. But if we're going to annex, you know, part of it is, is do the people want to be annexed? Um, I mean, and one of the questions about annexation is, you know, also the interstate. Well, you know, we'll have an opportunity if we want it to, to look at legislation to annex a mile either way of the interstate. Is that something that we should do? Uh, there may be benefits to it. There may not be. But we need to look at that. Uh, but I'm, I'm not opposed to annexation, but I'm all about uh, asking the people. And, and I don't think we need to be imposing things just to impose it as the government. Correct. Well, I can keep going for a while. All right, so there was a lot of discussion about the department heads and their salaries. So this question is relevant to that. What is the threshold of revenue the town would need to reach in order to provide salary increases to the department heads? What's the threshold this, uh, of revenue the town needs to provide salary increases? Well, I couldn't answer that question sitting here right now because I have no idea. And that was something you'd have to discuss with, as being mayor, you'd have to discuss that with your other, like your constituents. I can't, I can't, I, don't know, I wouldn't know how to answer that question right now. There's just no way of knowing because I'm, I'm not there. I don't know what town's bringing in, I don't know what town's spending. Yeah, so obviously I think it's unfair if, if I, I, I threw a number at the wall and said, here it is, you found it. Um, but I mean, I, I think uh, it's a great question. It's, well, I mean, are you going to address it? You know, look, between the debate we've had and it sounds like we got plenty coming in there, um, whoever's elected, we're, we're, we keep talking about growth. Um, we've talked about these salaries multiple times. The people are, are talking about heavily related to growth and salaries. So at the end of the day, the answer to that question would be, we have already, we can all agree that we're growing and we know that our public safety has a scale with that. I know to keep qualified and superior candidates in place, we've got to pay them and we've got to pay them more as time goes on. Um, uh, yearly is when typical uh, civil servant, servants and get their pay raises, um, you know, percentage based. And so, yeah, it should be looked at, absolutely. Um, and you should have a threshold and I can actually agree uh, here with you, Mr. Harrison, it should, on our departments, there should be some structure to, if, if, if you get hired tomorrow to be a police officer and I get hired as a, as a, as a firefighter, we, we should have things in place to say, 
look, man, if you hold tight, five, six, seven, you know. So we can certainly agree on that. Um, and But, yeah, that's something absolutely that should be looked at. I don't know that number, obviously. I would, again, rely heavily on uh, accounts and things of that nature and forecasting um, as you went over it. So I don't have a number to answer the question now. Our income this year is a little over $7 million, um, but typically we run about $6 million. I'm going to say $7 million. I know that we're bringing in $7 million, but I'm not sure if the ARP is a part of that or not. But but I know that the budget this year looked at around $7 million coming in. So if we're going to 6 or $7 million, we've been, it's been growing uh, here and there. But uh, to be able to get to that answer, we need to have a plan in place because there are things that we're not accommodating for in the town. There are things that we were missing and there are positions that we're going to need and things of that nature. And so we would need to come up with a plan to figure out where we need to be spending that money. I would love to be able to put it all right there, but that's not our reality. We're a town and we're becoming a city. And I would love to put in place an avenue for us to be able to meet the benchmarks, which is more than just population, to become a city. And some of those play things are already being in place. They're, you know, they're working there. But we, when you got to hire a full-time judge, when you got to build new structures like a holding, to have a holding sale and things like that, I mean, there's, there's the courtroom. There's things that we're going to need to take that leap to become a city and there's going to be better things once we're a city it gives it access to more stuff but that we're on that threshold now where we've got to be able to get there and we need to get there responsibly so the answer to that's going to be what's the plan how are we going to accommodate these other pieces it's not whether or not we want to give pay raises the question is, is can we can we afford to do that and right now i don't have an answer for what would that look like in the future until there's a plan all right this, all right. this is going good I'm going pretty fast through these so yeah, we'll, we'll go with at least one more. So this question is, what will you do to bring economic development and a diversified tax base to Houghton? What will you do to bring economic development and a diversified tax base to Houghton? You just have to go, you have to go out and talk to people, talk to businesses, talk to there again, it's not left up to the mayors to, I mean, he can talk to people, but he can't. It's going to have to go through the town town council to get approved, no matter what no matter what the mayor does. I mean, he can go out and talk to people and get them to come, you know, and come look and see if they want to be here. But it's also left up to the, to the town council to do what needs to be done to get them here. So... That's what I would I would try to get them here to talk to the correct people. I'm done. I think I think one of the most important things that a that a maybe on the top of everybody's mind when that kind of question gets asked, but I think one of the most important things a mayor can do when it comes to development is you gotta be a really good cheerleader. You gotta be a really good advocate for your, for your town. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's not gonna probably get thrown out in an MBA class or anything like that, but um, you gotta be a cheerleader, you gotta be an advocate for the town. Um, fostering the, the welcoming atmosphere to have them come here, important. And how can we affect that town hall? Well, we should be, we should be as quick as possible as we can with um, you know, decision makings on permits and, and having the hearings for things like Larkin said there, you know, uh, to, to get things approved. So make it a welcoming atmosphere. Be an advocate for the town. Um, you know, they should hear how passionate you are about it and sell them on, sell them on where it's going. And I, and I think, again, maybe that's not, you're not going to get that out of the NBA class, but um, a welcoming atmosphere, uh, I do think a mayor can actually take a, take a pretty strong, strong play on that. Mm-hmm. Well, the mayor's got to be the marketer. We don't have a marketer. We got we got to be our own marketer. And if you look at some of the other towns out there, and, and you go beyond just our area, they've got marketing strategies, and you can pull up and you can see what areas they have for development. They tell you exactly, hey, here's the here's what's coming for development right now. Here's what's for sale. Here's what's coming up. Here's you use that map overlay that they land map future use overlay that the MPC put together, and you say here's the businesses we want in, and you put a marketing scheme together. You work with your local realtors and everything else where you make it public right now if you want to town town website or anything else you don't know what that is there's there's nothing available we need to make our we need to market ourselves we need to put ourselves out there and say 
hey, hey, here's what we have available. We're work, we we are business. We're pro business, and so we want you to come and, and buy this property, work with these people, and and let's get it developed. And we can let people know that hey, we you know we don't have uh, a, a lot of food options. We've got some. We need more restaurants. We you know gas stations, you know, hotels, you name it. This, we're a blank slate for people, and I mean, it's, I love the businesses we have, and, um, and and I'm thankful for the business we have, but we need more. And so, as mayor, uh, I would like to, to market more of who we are and put some stuff down on paper and, and put it on the website and things like that to, to help attract those businesses. Um, as far as diversify that tax basis, uh, we have to be working with our realtors and our, um, our landowners to try to help encourage that growth. Nine, nine o'clock. You about ready to start wrapping it up? So, what about you guys? I'm ready. <laughs> so what I'm, we'll I'm do is going. we'll uh, we'll close it out, and uh, we'll let each of you uh, give your, you know, they they like to say the two minute elevators pitch. We're going to make this your one minute elevator pitch, <laughs> <laughs> and we'll start with you, Larkin. And uh, well, I want to go first this time. <laughs> Well, okay. Well, if you want to be last, yeah, I'll, I'll be last. Okay. Well, we'll pass, and we'll let uh, you go first if you'd like. And uh, it's fine. We'll... One minute. One minute. You gonna buzz me if I go over? I... <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll keep it. I'll keep it short because I because we've covered a lot. Um, I just want to say again, thank you, Bozier Watch. Both, thank y'all, Miss Stacy Berry. Thank you. Um, we're here in her office right now. Um, and again, as I said earlier, uh, it sounds like we had a lot of engagement and I'm really looking forward to, or, or maybe not, depending on what's in there. Uh, I'm really looking forward to actually getting back and maybe staying up for three more hours and going through all that stuff. So I just think it's awesome. Um, the, a municipality our size and, and here we are. We got the big guys out from Bozier City here with us. <laughs> We're getting it live streamed. There's a ton of engagement, it sounds like. Um, so thank everyone that's that has watched and has continued to watch. and. Um, hold my feet to the fire and the things that that i've said um if you have questions on those things reach out let's talk about that let's have a meeting let's address those issues and i can promise you as i stated how i want to run and have chose to run my campaign i will always be ethical in nature i will always be moral in nature and i can promise to put the best interest of the town and the citizens as a whole and uh, I would really appreciate the support and vote come November. Thank y'all. Clay? As you said, thank you so much. Thanks, Bozier Watch. Thank y'all for doing this. And uh, thank y'all each for coming out and doing this. And uh, I appreciate it. And I, I would love to do another one. If y'all were up for it, I'd absolutely love to do another one. There's a lot of questions out there people have. And I think that's a great start and a platform for us. So if y'all are up for another one, let's do it. Maybe we can do it in front of people. Uh, but uh, as I mentioned before, I've got 20 plus years of experience working at a corporate level and uh, I'm used to, to working with the, the needs of, of, of organizations and as a town, everything that as a mayor would correlate directly with, with my experience, whether it be in engineering or pastorate, working with budgets and management. There may be some people that disagree with certain things about me and that's okay. You can disagree. We can have disagreements on, on things. We're not always going to come to come on the same agreement. but. That's the thing about me. You can disagree with me. You know, you can always try to bully me. Maybe when we have a little problem, we're going to, to solve that. But, but we can disagree, and this town is going to have to be able to disagree. And right now, people don't like the fact that people disagree with things. But part of growth is is learning how to work with people. You're not always going to see eye to eye, and you've got to be able to work with people, regardless of what just took place, whatever disagreements may may, may happen. And I have the ability to to hold that. I don't hold anything against people. I don't care if you get in my face. I may not let you do it and i may stand up for myself but we can keep working together and move on and so uh i've shown that i i have the character and i have the experience and i'm looking forward to to this continuing this race and i look forward to november and let the let, let the voters say what they want to say well, i want to thank both of y'all for coming out taking time out of y'all day to come with us and have this debate thank miss, miss stacy for letting us have her venue here and also would like to say that I wanted to work with anybody that want you know that wants to work. anybody got any questions or concerns? Hit you know find me. I'm on Facebook. Find me. You know I'm not hard to find, and we'll discuss it. We'll talk about it. I think if we all work together. First responders, town council, mayor, the citizens of Halton. We all work together. We can make this the best little town in Northwest Louisiana to live in. To raise our children and keep them here. To make them stay. To let them you know they want to stay here.
Thank you all very much. All right. Well, I, Rex, I, I feel like that uh, the town of Houghton is going to be in good shape uh, with whichever candidate prevails. Um, to me, the takeaway is, is they all three have a passion for Houghton, and I think they're sincere about it. Um, so, you know, as long as that's their motivating factor, I think whichever one prevails will do well. And, I uh, think you are correct, Mr. Lowry. And there's a passion for Houghton online. <laughs> <laughs> well, we do need to recognize, you know, our sponsors of our show that help us out. You know, Pelican Training, yep. that's one for sure. And uh, Smarter Geek, I mean, the, the man behind the tech, uh, you yourself. And uh, if anybody needs a mortgage, by all means, go see my lovely bride, Carol Lowry, at Acadiana Mortgage. But tonight we want to especially thank Stacy Berry, you know, with her real estate company here in Halton for hosting this debate. And... Uh, we uh, appreciate everybody that's helped uh, make this a success, and especially to the candidates willing to uh, step in front of a camera and, you know, let it all hang out. Yeah, and as you folks know, we will see y'all every Tuesday night, usually at 7 p.m. We haven't been late very many times, and I want to thank all you guys for coming out this evening and having a robust debate. It was pretty fun. We got some comments that ABC should take some notes on how to run a debate. I don't know if we have that many viewers, but. Fair enough. So we also want to thank all the people that were commenting and all that. Again, I encourage y'all to go check out those comments. You may want to address some of them. You may not, whatever. But I will encourage you to uh, take a look at them. Okay. Are you looking on Facebook or YouTube or both? Facebook. YouTube, and then I'll be uploading to Twitter. I couldn't stream to Twitter from okay. here, but we'll have them on all three platforms, and we'll release a podcast version, audio only. Okay. All right. Have a good night. Thank you all. Right. Thank you, everyone.